with those who cannot attend. And so those who see that uh, read AI, it's one of Google's add-ons that sends you the summary at the end. So let's see how good it is. But anyway, um, hi everyone. So briefly, um, as you know, so Vladimir here is um, uh, the founder of a company now called Zen Hire. We started working with them. So um, must've been like four or five years ago. At that time, the company specialized in uh, developing resumes for job seekers. <clears throat> and so they would design very pretty, very informative resumes. Um, uh, my wife actually received some help from the company and yes, the resume looks like very nice and you know, like professionally formatted, nothing like what our CVs look like where it's just plain text. Then they added some other coaching and advising and cover letter help. And they changed name from uh, Zen CV to Zen Hire because it's not only about CV. So you submit the request and then you're in the Zen, you're, you're relaxed, the company does everything. So they switched it to the full spectrum. And then lately they started also working servicing um, recruiters. So the challenge for the recruiters is that they receive a lot of applications for each um, uh, job opening. And then somebody needs to read those applications. And so there is a lot of text-based information, but also lately it, become, has, it has become very popular to ask people to conduct sort of any interview, job interview, where the questions kind of pop up on the screen, the, the answers are recorded, but then somebody needs to watch all those many hours, if not hundreds, if not thousands of hours of interviews. And so the company is trying to develop uh, some sort of an AI assisted tool that will watch those interviews and basically based on them will recommend or predict performance, uh, future performance of the applicants. And so um, we kind of tried something along those line, uh, lines last semester, I believe, when our students were invited to um, submit recordings of their self introductions. And so we tried to see if uh, those um, introductions correlate with future performance and exculture. So, uh, but now we have an opportunity to do more. And so uh, in the ideal world, <clears throat> the way Vladimir sees it, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. So he would like to um, ask all our, whatever thousands of students we have in Exculture to conduct a proper job interview of uh, full scale 40 minutes or so. And then uh, that will give him first a big database of people uh, who completed the job interview. Then we can match those job interviews with performance data that we have on all Exculture students, hundreds of indicators from peer evaluations to leadership uh, role on the team, uh, to satisfaction, to the quality of the output, number of conflicts and anything and everything in between. Uh, and so for him, that would be a nice test and ground. And if it works, if it shows that his algorithm predicts future performance, I guess he can improve sales. Um, for me, on the one hand, or for us all, oh yeah, Vladimir, yeah, if you wanna clarify. Uh, or should I fin finish my speech and then you will- Please, please, please finish, I am, I'm patient. Yeah. So for us, uh, it's an opportunity to maybe do some sort of research. So administratively, it'd be nice for me to have a tool that predicts who's going to be a good performer and maybe who's going to be a slacker uh, whom we should not even allow to participate in the project. Because as you know, uh, in team-based projects, if somebody doesn't perform, the whole team suffers and then I get to deal with the complaints. So, but also maybe it could be turned into some sort of a publication opportunity. Everybody talks about AI. Uh, it's a big deal. Um, as I, we were joking before everyone joined that these days AI writes my cover letter and creates my resume. Then another AI reads my resume and cover letter and video interview. And then so AI applies, AI hires. And then in my case, AI does much of my job anyway. So, uh, so it's, you know, it's a funny situation. Now, uh, Vladimir, that's primarily directed to you, but also to everybody else. Um, so that's the sort of your perspective. My perspective um, is that, yes, I sense an opportunity to conduct a study here, but I have a number of very big uh, sort of concerns as well. So one, I'm not sure if it will lead to any publications because in the past uh, collaboration with companies didn't usually lead to publications. Uh, including for the reasons that the company doesn't care about publications and sometimes even companies specifically don't want anything published, especially if the results are not favorable. So they want it, you know, uh, secret, uh, but also companies are, you know, they're not in the academic business, so to speak, of publishing. So, but I know that it will cost me a lot of time. Uh, 
So a lot of time to set everything up to manage it. Other problems uh, are uh, time, uh, meaning time, not the time that I spent, you know, managing it, but time students spend doing interviews. So we are always pushing back on data requests because we do get a lot of requests for data collection. And so we have to be cognizant of, uh, you know, nobody likes surveys, nobody likes to do extra work. And so first, if we ask for too much, students and professors will complain, some will drop out and never participate in the project again. But equally importantly, it's not that I feel bad about the students or the complaints, it's also if we give them more data to sort of to provide, uh, they will stop reading questions and they just randomly click just to get through the survey so that the professors get off their backs. And so um, the interviews that you ask, again, same thing. So it seems like, you know, like it's a lot of time, especially the full one. There is no way we can do 40 minute mandatory. We may allow some students if they want to practice, but uh, even 10 minutes, we will get a lot of complaints. Students will be making up all kinds of reasons why they can't do it. My internet didn't work. Uh, the dog chewed my internet cable and it didn't, you know, like whatever we, you know, we've heard all those before. Um, another problem is uh, that um, working with companies here specifically. So you guys, as I said, you're not in this uh, strange world uh, that we are in, publish or perish. So when you publish, you publish something practical, useful, and short. We need to publish academic papers. So we need to have like theory, uh, hypotheses, you know, uh, make a contribution to theory development. Uh, we do recognize that it's often counterproductive, but that's how the system works. And that's what the top journals that we sort of receive rewards for counts. And so for us, the only outcome that really counts is uh, basically publications. We've had some companies that approached us and said, how much will it cost us to collect the data? And so, and in some cases they were actually offering good money, but I understand your company not is uh, not at the stage where you will pay us so much that we'll say, okay, screw the students' feelings, yes. For the $2 million that they offer, we'll ask them to do the 40 minute interviews. So, uh, so that probably will not work. So our interest would be publishing. And then, so um, obviously the biggest challenge that I have, but it seems like all of you didn't have, didn't share that same concern. I still don't quite see what that study might look like. And so luckily we have here at least two people from um, information systems uh, department, uh, Indica and Marvin. So they publish, including in journals that are more like information systems, IT. So they say in top journals, in those journals, including FT50 journals, again, that's like, you know, like the holy grail. So that's the journals. If we publish there, we may even get a bonus from the dean. So they may publish something that is more technology description. Like, for example, they may be interested in some studies that simply show that, yes, video interviews or scores of video interviews by AI correlate with future performance, or maybe describe how exactly this particular AI works, uh, what specific, I don't know, prompts we may have used or whatever, you know, the technology approach. And so this is what the result is. And so they say in those journals, it may be sufficient to do it that way. Because if we go into management journals, no, they will want, you know, like literature review, theory, hypotheses, and they will torture us. We tried a few times, they will say, oh, your theory is not novel enough, or uh, your theory is not theoretical enough, whatever the concerns are. And so I wouldn't really know how to frame it. Uh, I know administratively, it's useful for me to, to have a tool like that. But for publications, I really wouldn't know how to present it so that we get it, you know, uh, into a management journal. Likewise, we tried to apply for some grants before along these lines. And so the reviewers seem to have been people who are more IT rather than management. And so we tried to do something related around crowdsourcing. And so we approached it as an organizational design issue. So, you know, crowds versus traditional organizations. And so the reviewers seem to, to be thinking about crowdsourcing as like Uber, Airbnb. Uh, and so they, they, they were more like, what color will your, you know, apply button will be? And so what steps they will need to go on the web uh, or in the, in the app to sign up? I'm like, no, we are not about apps, or, you know, we are more about, so there, there was a disconnect like that. So maybe, I don't know, maybe Marvin and Indica will be able to tell us more about that. So, and Wendy is sort of in between. So she's in management, but she's also sort of more on the information systems. And then uh, Marquera, I and D, she are more management. So, but yeah, uh, Vladimir, if you can give, an, give us an overview of how you see it, and then maybe we can figure out a way to make it work. Sure, Vaz, thanks a lot for the introduction and giving context to everyone. I think that's really important for understanding each other today. Um, I'll try to lower my hands. Um, 
Yes, I can do it like this. First of all, I apologize if I look a bit tired. I'm currently in Manila, Philippines. It's almost midnight here, uh, but I'm really looking forward to talking with all of you. So um, thanks for thanks for bringing up this opportunity. A bit of context about us. Yes, Vaz and I were working uh, together since 2019. We had a previous build uh, business called Zen CV from 2019 to 2021, uh, early 22. And uh, that business was focused on helping people um, upskill their their resumes and uh, enhance their career um, journey. Uh, we've completely shut down those operations at the end of 2021, and we've uh, pivoted and changed our business model. Uh, and since early 2022, so almost two years now, we've been developing this artificial intelligence software uh, for recruiters. So basically, you can think of it as chat GPT for nonverbal communication. So it's an AI recruiter that interviews people and analyzes their facial expression, tone of voice, and logic behind the, behind the words that they speak in order to infer mostly for now English language parameters, such as vocabulary, fluency, pronunciation, accent, and so forth. But we're also working uh, in the future, we will be working more on some more sophisticated advanced algorithms, such as soft skill detection, uh, personality detection from interviews, uh, also patience, confidence, insecurity, stuff, stuff like that. Uh, the AI is part of a wider app that the HR uses to handle the hiring process from start to finish, from job description creation to onboarding, with all the necessary assessments and modules in between, one of which is the AI module, but it's not the only module. We also have a, a, something we call a test library, basically a library of different assessments, including Big Five, Hexical Technology Assessments, IQ Assessments, Learning Aptitude Assessments, is something we're interested in developing, and so forth and so forth. And currently why I'm in Manila is because we um, believe our solution is best uh, adapted to big call centers and BPOs, so in mass hiring situations. So we our initial target market will be in the Philippines. Um, a bit a bit context about the study. Ideally, what uh, we we had in mind, and of course I don't want to be stubborn on this and open-minded to discuss different different uh, possible avenues here. Uh, one main idea that it would interest us would be to, of course, uh, partner with ex-culture and universities and have uh, as many students possible to perform the initial assessment set. And there are different ways, different, let's say, levels of ambition we can apply here. They can only do a 10-minute interview, which is probably more realistic, as Vaz indicated, than in the medium version they would do uh, an AI interview, which would do the accent, pronunciation, vocabulary, fluency, so English language parameters, plus an IQ test, which is a shorter version of an IQ test, not a full IQ test, um, which lasts 20 minutes. And then in option C, which would be the most ambitious option, they would do the AI assessment 10 minutes, the IQ test, and the big five or hexagonal personality assessment. Um, the theory behind this um, is something that I understood is quite uh, established, but at the same time uh, novel. And I'll explain in the book of The Future of Recruitment by Dr. Thomas Tremoto Premozic, he mentions um, and he refers to many different studies and citations from uh, peer reviewed journals about how the top three or top four, he, he is basically comparing different uh, assessment methods and how they predict on the job performance. And he makes a really solid case. <clears throat> against CVs, and he makes a really interviews, especially unstructured interviews that HRs normally make because they are prone to human bias, they're prone to deviate from the original set of questions and so forth, so forth. And the, he, through multiple studies, he uh, mentions that, if I remember correctly, CVs have the worst predictability, about 0 0.15, uh, unstructured interviews, 0.18, Structured interviews are much better, 0.28 to 0.35, depending on context. Um, IQ goes between 0.2 and 0.58. So very, in some con also depending on context, in some contexts, very highly predictive. Uh, and personality is the third one. So what I, what made sense to me, and obviously I'm not an academic, so I don't know if this, this is valid also from your perspective, would be if we would combine the three, the top three main predictors of on-the-job performance, and we could measure that relatively accurately, 
and we would have that on the job performance data. We could search for these patterns, we could search uh, for correlations, and we could try to understand what is really the predictive validity. Um, having said that, I like I would like to also say that uh, I'm, I'm my knowledge in how papers are conducted as pretty pretty limited. So I would love to, if possible, get just a one or two or three minute overview from someone on this call to help me understand, okay, one, two, three, these are the steps of how a scientific study is, is done. And I would like to also understand uh, Vaz and others, what are the criteria that you consider uh, for uh, for a published that must have, should have to be publishable. Um, and then I think I can either give my ideas on how we can make this work or something is gonna come out of it. Thank you, Vladimir. I think it may be a better process if instead of us sort of teaching you or or educating you on how to how this publishing you know paper papers work, I suggest that instead maybe now that we have a bunch of professors here, we first talk about whether or not a, a publishable study or a stream of studies is possible based on on such data. And then I guess for you, Vladimir, the question will be not so much about you know how the publication process works, but if there is a paper that we see as promising, then we'll need to coordinate with you about the data collection. So uh, both from me, data collection, from you, data sharing. Uh, we may also need from you some additional information about the methodology. Uh, I don't think we'll need the code per se, but you know, like I'm not sure if there are any different types of AI. So like basically we'll need information that describes the, the process. But for me now, the biggest question is, can something like this lead to a publishable paper? Like, for example, I see right away that we could, for example, see if um, AI assessed IQ, for example, correlates with IQ based on a traditional IQ test, or AI, assist, uh, AI assessed uh, language proficiency score uh, correlates with the like TOEFL type of uh, test scores or peer evaluated language proficiency. I'm not sure if we need the accent here, but potentially, you know, might be also useful. One of the professors here, Marquetta, is actually doing some research where she's trying to see if the uh, manager's accent affects managers, sort of how the managers perceive, but maybe we could do like a separate study on how the person's accent, for example, or language, uh, you know, proficiency correlates with performance or peer assessment. That might be potentially a study if AI could give us such a score. But then other than that, I don't know, maybe we can also look at something like, you know, uh, what predicts performance better, AI scores or the traditional selection tools such as IQ, EQ, CQ, personality, and things like that. But to be honest, all of these ideas, well, interesting, I don't think that's the kind of stuff that can be published in the top journal. So uh, at least I don't see what would be here, the theory, other than a good practical question. And so I guess the question is... What do you see why why not, Vaz? Sorry to interrupt. Why not? What is the reason why it wouldn't be published? There is no theory. Like, what's your theory? Uh, and and don't don't get us started on on the theory stuff. But we had some. At least I know that I and Wendy here. Uh, she switched off her camera. We got so many good papers rejected because there was not enough theory. And by theory, I mean usually you need to have some sort of dead man who published something in the sixties or seventies who calls it like signaling theory or expectancy uh, yeah, theory or some other theory. And then you sort of either test that theory using your data or you um, uh, develop it further. So if you come up with a good explanation, usually it's not good enough because you know that's not theory, that's just your logic. But if you publish that logic as a theory paper in AMR, another journal then it's so anyway it's too long to explain and it's stupid and makes no sure. sense so I'm, I'm just i'm just saying uh that in this book you reference more than 20 or 50 papers yeah on the but, but you know again books the last 70 years books don't count either so books we don't get any credit for books so it has to be a, so no, no, but these are yeah, these are peer reviewed these are peer reviewed papers that he references yeah. in the book. No, no, but that's the point. Haven't... So, so that's the point. So the question is, what would be the papers? How they're structured? What is the theory there? And so my hope is that maybe, as I said, maybe we can go more to the information systems journals, which seem to be less obsessed with theory, and they can publish what we would call like technology papers or engineering papers, where they describe the process. So, uh, but in any case, don't try to understand it. It makes no sense. Everybody recognizes that it's somewhat dysfunctional. 
but we must publish in those papers. Uh, so oh, sure, sure. I'm just trying to understand what is the criteria, and I, based on the criteria that you described, the papers that he referenced, in my opinion, it's, it's fits answer, perfectly. It's the answer to the why question. So simply showing that AI scores correlate with IQ scores, it's 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 just an interesting observation. So the theory is, you know, you explain why A leads to B or why I A is different from B. And so what is the theory? Like, for example, you know, if you looked at, you know, incentives improve performance uh, or I don't know, like what improves performance, for example, motivation, what it predicts motivation expectancy. Anyway, too, too complicated, too long. So I guess I'd like to direct the question to the professors here. So do you think if we were able to subject a few thousand people to these job interviews and AI watched those interviews and produced scores. Uh, so basically AI evaluated IQ score, uh, language proficiency score, possibly strength of the accent. What are other dimensions that it can evaluate? What are other scores that it can produce? I mean, as I was listening to Vladimir, right, one of the things that was really interesting was that he mentioned facial expression and tone. Uh -huh. yeah, and yeah. that got me to thinking, right, a lot of people make snap judgments. They say that students will know whether they give us good course evaluations in the first 10 minutes yeah, yeah, of the, the course. Blink, blink, right? Right. And that made me think that we could look at how, like, what length of video recording it takes for the AI to be successful in predicting on the job performance well. Does it take three seconds? Do we need seven or do we need two minutes? Because I think tone, facial expression, those things actually don't take long for humans to interpret. And I'm wondering if AI could be potentially even faster. And it, you know, this is the first <laughs> brainstorm but, but that I'm bringing up. Would it be something like that? Would it be publishable? Because research in this area was done. So I remember this um, Gladwell's book um, called Blink, I believe it was. So they talked about studies like where, for example, students would be shown three seconds or five seconds of a professor walking into the classroom. And then they would try to do teaching evaluations and they would compare that with the actual teaching evaluations of the professor. So in this case, they would have. So in our case, we can use AI to generate the data and we assume that it's accurate. And so, so it will not be so much about AI, it will be about snap judgments. It just, it happens to be that we got the data from AI or it could be, can AI, so in this case, it would be more of an IT paper, but so I'm not sure how, how it would be exactly, you know, uh, structured. So um, I, I see your question. Yeah, I don't know if it would be comparative against a human, if that's the interesting part, or if the interesting part is that the mm -hmm. snap judgment can also be made by AI and even quicker. You know, just sort of the, the first thought that, that that came to my mind where there would be a theory attached, right? This idea of using um, kind of short uh, kind of per perceptions or, or interactions be allowing us to make accurate predictions of on the job performance. Vladimir, so what are the what are the data that your AI can generate? So you said it can give you some sort of an IQ score, right? language proficiency or or so what are the what are the variables that it can sort of you know give us in the numeric form no so iq could be measured only through an iq test as mentioned uh -huh. email right now so the ai doesn't do the i scoring uh, as of now although if we would collect you know five thousand iq scores and five thousand interviews then there, that would be an interesting study to try to build that model uh -huh. that actually predicts iq from interviews uh, that's uh, option one. But yeah, the, to answer your question more specifically, I apologize for the background noise, noise is the AI currently is able to measure uh, vocabulary, fluency, accent, pronunciation, and tone of voice, uh, basic NLP sentiment analysis, positive, uh, neutral, and negative. Um, and uh, to give you some context, uh, it, we aren't primarily interested in diving deep into doing the correlations between uh, the AI and uh, AI scores and human scores, we have that already. Uh, we have our measures and we're pretty in, in their accuracy. But if you so AI scores can and do that as scores, well. AI scores and human scores on what? On, on just simply quality of the interview or what is evaluated? So it, it, it I, I want to be cognizant of time. I don't know how much more time we have left. The meeting was half an hour, but uh, I could talk about this for 45 minutes. Basically, um, 
different AI algorithms are trained differently. Uh, for example, we have a fluency prediction algorithm. We had, you know, five PhD linguist students uh, uh, studying uh, English, and then they would go through hundreds and hundreds and thousands of interviews, and they would score candidates from one to five, and then we would do an average score, and then it would be an evaded average uh, score. On language proficiency on... or language quality, or what, what did they score? It would, it would be fluency. And then one, one dimension would be fluency, the second dimension would be vocabulary according to the CEFR scores, uh, third dimension would be pronunciation, the fourth dimension would be accent, and that's it. And we have different accuracy levels of our algorithms. Um, they range between 80 and 96%. Um, and some are less robust and some are more robust, but they're a work in progress. And we would also like to use this uh, the, the main problem that we have is the data. So we would be interested in um, getting as many students as possible in order to have a more robust analysis of the uh, precision. So if you want to do uh, something that would be a deep dive into the AI and how, how much the human scores correlate with the AI scores, we can do that definitely. But to have a really robust analysis, we would have to have at least a couple of thousand students doing it. Yeah, I see Indika raised her hand. Yeah, so I have a quick question. So you said like we can do a personality, uh, tones and everything. Is it based on the text data or is it based on the facial ex expressions, like emotions and things like that? No, so the AI can only establish language parameters as of now. If we would be measuring IQ and personality, that would be using traditional methods. So IQ tests for Transcribe IQ, and... per per personality, so multiple choice personality, big five or hexaco assessment. Uh, for measuring personality. So AI currently doesn't produce personality and IQ scores, but that could be an interesting part of the study if we would measure all three. So AI interview, IQ test, and textical personality or big five. Then after collecting a couple of thousand examples, we might even be able to build a model that predicts those. Okay, so based on the facial expression, do you generate any any variables? I mean, any anything from the facial expressions? Uh... So we are collecting facial expression data, and we are collecting how the the all the let's say um, all the critical data points on your uh, on the parts of the face that move. However, we're not using that data yet because okay. we are only crunching the audio algorithms for uh, speech analysis, right? However, okay. we have that data, and we can use it for predicting something else where it would make sense. For example, personality or confidence or some other things in the future. Okay, thank you. So if we do evaluate language only, I wonder again if we can do something related to um, uh, effects of language on performance and both objective performance, but also perceived performance. So, uh, you know, do people with uh, more fluency in language, do they get to be team leaders? Do they get higher peer evaluations? Do they in get- That is very interesting. That so is very in this case, that would be something that, you know, but in this case, it's not a study about AI, it's a study about language. We just use AI to evaluate language fluency. And we can have also, then we have an objective test of language uh, uh, skills. Such we, exactly. And, and we could do both. We can do two studies. I don't know if that's possible. Well, the, the challenge here again is how novel will it be? And so we kind of lose AI as the selling point, in this case, simply AI gives, gives us the data, but we're not studying AI. We are studying the effects of language, which I assume has been studied in hundreds of studies before us. So we know that, you know, like accent, for example, or, you know, how articulate you are, that does shape how people perceive you. So- um, Yeah. That, 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 that's why my idea was to combine several parameters that are predictors. Maybe the combination of these wasn't studied. Mm -hmm. And any other studies that may be produced based on something like this? I see potential gender, yeah, cultural bias, yeah. So when do when do put that? Yeah, and we can look at you know scores by women, men, women, men, by maybe nationality, culture, and things like that. So, but again, will it lead to something publishable in a top journal? And so, uh, Ladina, sorry, that's hard to say because I don't know what the data is going to tell us. If mm -hmm. we find nothing, then we find nothing. Um, 
but I mean, we, we can set it up with, with the best of intentions. Um, and, but, but, you know, I, I think our best bet is the more ideas we have and, and the more potential studies we have, the chances that will lead to something that's publishable. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, you know, so, but for AI, um, can we maybe compare then, um, I don't know, maybe record those interviews? Well, but so you you would need, yeah, I guess your system will do the recordings, right? I wonder if we could sub subject it to multiple yes. different AIs and then maybe do a study like comparative effectiveness of different AI systems, or maybe have humans watch those videos too. And, you know, we, we could. We could because each of our models, uh, not each, but many of our models are actually an ensemble model. So meaning if we detect vocabulary, we detect vocabulary in four or five different ways through four or five different machine learning approaches and methods. Mm -hmm. And then we do an average of these and that's our final score. That's how we uh, that's how we achieve robustness and not only accuracy. So yes, a comparative analysis of different algorithms is a possible avenue. Um, but then I, I don't know how interesting it is for your from your side. Does anyone know what, what these days has been published about AI? I mean, like what kind of papers or studies do they do? In our field, we do like prediction models, like, you know, feeding this data to predict student performance. So that's one area. And the other area is like, especially like digital platforms, like crowdsourcing area, they're looking at like uh, the transformative value of AI to users, transformative value of AI to like platform providers. So those are some areas that uh, we so have in our field. Simply describe the methodology or like what's the core of the study? Like what's the contribution? Uh, so like, yeah, like contribution is like, you know, can we like, like, you know, like in a crowdsourcing platform, can you uh, use AI to reduce the noise? Look, like, like crowd participation is full of noise, right? So can you filter out your crowd and uh, like, you know, focus them in a particular job? So that's filtering out the noise. Some things like in that nature, uh, like how so the like AI or the- with, with you yesterday, and Marvin, so that would be sort of the experimental conditions in one condition, it's just simply a discussion in the other condition, discussion with AI, Sort of yes. out the most useful comments and reducing noise that way. Yes. So like, yeah, like experiment less such as with the AI, without the AI, all the combinations like you know human mm -hmm. and AI. Uh, so this type of uh, yeah experimental study uh, we we do see in our field. Mm -hmm. it, it needs a little bit of theory and all, but not like in management. They're not giving mm -hmm. a lot of emphasis on the theory. You need to have some theory and a hypothesis. And also other thing is like prediction models. So we do see a lot of prediction models. So these data can feed as the variables and you predict performance, predict for performance. So that's- And a, simply showing that there is a correlation, that's enough, right? So saying that C it predicts performance. Yeah, so with the AI data, your predictions are much better. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, things like that. So our models improve with the AI. Or, so you basically uh, show that it works. Like the whole contribution is that while we use this tool, it, you see it works. It works. So the performance improves with the AI. So that's the contribution. Uh, uh, mainly like in practical implications part yeah, yeah. and of course we need to have some theory but we are not like very into theories like in your field uh, so uh, based on you know we we have to use some theory but not not it's it's not a big deal in it's, it's in management field uh, in yeah. is field so it's more like focusing on the artifact right so yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah <laughs> We, we could, as I said, compare, for example, these AI scores uh, as predictors of future performance versus, you know, other things that we usually use, such as, you know, like IQ score, we may look at a CQ scores, we may look at uh, maybe, I don't know, GPA, uh, whatever other data we might have about people, and then, you know, trying to predict uh, how well they will perform. But I'm not sure if that would be sufficient for a management journal, but maybe something for an, you know, yeah. information systems. And it would be really interesting, like if if you can get more variables related to AI uh, based on facial expression and, and things like that, uh, because I see a lot of in our field, like the the generative AI is a big deal. We do have top journals, especially especially focusing on generative AI, like mm -hmm. what generative AI for crowdsourcing and things like that. So. Uh, so if you can bring, you know, a little bit much richer data sets since you're collecting the facial expressions and all, um, I think that's kind of, I haven't seen any publication, but this area that they're like, you know, uh, kind of novel and interesting 
uh, in our field. Yeah, so okay. here, I guess it seems to me that one side or one type of research could be comparing AI to humans yes. in all kinds of ways. You know, is AI accurate at, you know, reading or yeah. foreign accents or fluency or whatever else? In this case, it would be basically, you know, AI scores versus whatever scores we get either from peers or professors or linguists. And then the other side would be forget about AI. AI just gives you the scores about, you know, fluency, vocabulary, facial expressions. And then the study is do those fluency, vocabulary, facial expressions and whatnot, do they correlate with whatever else we want to predict? And in this case, it just becomes a regular management study. Uh, it just the data came from AI. I guess it would be an added benefit, but otherwise, or maybe there will be some sort of a validation process. We say, well, the data came from AI, but we had a sample of those introduced scored by humans. The correlation is there, so we can use them. So we, we assume that these are valid scores uh, and reliable scores. So, uh, but again, I'm not sure if any of those would be good enough for a, for a good enough journal. And by the way, yes, so we are talking here about the amount of time that must be almost guaranteed to lead uh, to some form of FT50 publication, because if it's just a publication, then no, it's definitely not worth, I mean, I can crank out a bunch of those with much lesser effort. So it needs to be something that is, you know, going into a top journal, uh, or at least has the potential. I mean, obviously nobody can predict, but um, okay. okay. Any other ideas or questions before we adjourn and, and think and then decide later? I don't know any other thoughts. What we can do I would that. just I would just share that uh, there are many new models in AI that are not only large language models such as uh, GPT-4 and others. Yeah. Uh, there are uh, there is a model called Whisper, which allows you to do uh, basically open source uh, transcription, uh -huh. which would make the AI element um, very replicable for other people to do as well. And then the the way in which these large audio models work they're basically deep neural nets meaning that they have these hidden latent this like la these like latent embeddings uh and basically what we do for some of our models we take whisper as a deep learning net that's fine-tuned a lot of audio and we extract the embeddings uh so the basically the hidden representation of speech speech patterns and signals and we correlate these embeddings with the scores of the of like uh, accent, pronunciation, stuff like that. So uh, the accuracy that we're achieving in some of our models is above 90%, 93% in some cases, 96 in some others. Uh, I, I haven't seen many, because I'm in this field, I'm doing a lot of research with papers to see what else has been done in the field. And I haven't seen many studies uh, on accurate language prediction uh, audio-wise from, from AI. So I guess that might be interesting. Vladimir, what was that book that you mentioned uh, that in the beginning? Uh, what was the author and the title? The Future of Recruitment, Dr. Oh. Thomas Chemoro Premozic. I can write it in the chat. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we can take a look at it. I see in Google Scholar there are quite a few papers um, on um, recruitment and artificial intelligence, but again, we need to take a closer look, so I'm not familiar with it. Yet. Yeah. Boss, can I show a few study models that are published in top journals about AI? Yeah, yeah. So, Again, um, JJP. Yeah, um, so share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay, so are you looking at this one here? This one was published in AMJ just recently. So the X variable, it's more like behavioral. For all the models that I'm going to show, they're more like behavioral side of using AI, um, like acceptance of the employees, right? The AI's influence on task performance through those mediators and how a person's conscientiousness would affect these relationships. And this is like one of them. And then, uh, so what is what is then the, the first variable? Is it use, no use? Or? Yes, yes, yes. Or I don't remember if it's a dummy or it's a continuous variable, but then there's other models. This one was published in um, Applied Psychology, frequency of using robots, right? And then it would lead to passion decay and work 
withdraw, family withdraw, and stuff like that. So again, very um, behavioral and OB there. And also this one is published in Human Resource Management, Dependence on in, um, Intellectual uh, Intelligence Machines, very similar. Their X variables are very similar. And how it influences tax performance through those processes. And this one, um, this one is more like a simulation, like how AI is similar to human behaviors. And then it would lead to customer satisfaction through these perceived perceptions. Um, so I think we can get a rough idea through these models about how AI is modeled in OB literature in some of the pop uh, top journals. But I agree with you, Boss, in your first email, you mentioned that one of the important questions is to see um, the elements of this AI tool that we are using, right? So um, there's pri priority uh, problems with that, but we need, if we are doing a validation study, like comparing this AI tool to other current selection tools like personality interviews, we do need to know the specific components that are building these AI tools. For example, for interviews. Yeah. Um, yeah, so interviews is very effective, but then we know that there's interviews can be, the questions can be designed in different ways. So like job relatedness of the questions will be one of the dimensions that can be manipulated. Uh, to see the effect of it on the uh, uh, on the uh, selection performance or employees interview performance. Um, so that's one single element that we know about interview questions. And then also IQ, of course, IQ is testing a person's math ability, reading ability, spatial ability and stuff. So those yeah. are the specific items that we, uh, elements that we need to know. Uh, before we can delve into the question of the validity of the AI tools, because now, you know, it's a black box, as you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much we can know about the, these. There is an interesting paper in the AI space that came out last year. It's called uh, Deep Neural Nets are actually decision trees. And uh, when we zoom into how uh, what would normally be a black box uh, type of thing that we consider in AI, uh, actually, in decision trees, we can try to understand. We can we can understand from decision trees the logic that they uh, design based on the data and the patterns mm -hmm. that they follow. Uh, and actually, there is the, this new paper said that even uh, deep neural nets that seem completely as a black box are actually very similar in their design uh, thought process uh, to decision trees. So we might be able to get some interpret interpretability as well from the from the AI model. All right, thank you. Yeah. So maybe I suggest then, so we have a lot of input information. So let's take a couple of days and think. And so, and then if, you know, either connect again in a live meeting or or if you want to send me once you have an idea. So my logic here is that as long as we can design a study that looks promising and could be published in a top journal, I'll go through the uh, pains of collecting the data. I will coordinate with Vladimir. So We'll, we'll we'll manage all the logistics as long as we have a good study in mind and as long as one of you or several of you will volunteer to sort of sort of be the lead authors on the actual write-up so you you know and vice versa and Vladimir again in, in in full disclosure so if such study will not be proposed then it's definitely a no from me because um you know I don't see I I personally don't see quite yet how that can be converted into something of value you know to me so we'll have to think about you know but but at the same time everybody seems to be of the opinion that it's a great opportunity so i truly hope that something interesting will be proposed and we can turn this into 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 one or multiple good publications so um i think marvin has a question yeah, marvin and i see this she has a question yeah i just wanted to ask a question to vladimir hello vladimir is there a use case with your system where it doesn't replace human interviews by its augments? Sorry, could you please repeat the question? Is there a use case with your system where it's not a replacement for humans, but it's a two way it augments human performance? Like, have you seen a use case like that uh, with your system yet? Um, yes. So, one potential use case for let's say not substituting, but augmenting humans would be um, 
I don't know if this if this fits your criteria, but if if an applicant would do an interview, um, they would get these. Uh, precise measurements on the doing English language facets, uh, vocabulary, fluency, pronunciation, tone of voice, etc. Um, these could be used as feedback for these people to improve. So uh, we are, let's say, HRs usually don't provide feedback that's that detailed. So in the sense that AI could provide this uh, detailed feedback in automatic and uh, would augment. So HRs don't have the time when they have five prior applicants to tell and give very specific feedback to each one of the applicants. AI could do that in automatic, so in that way, uh, it would augment uh, human human output. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Is regarding the data or your model? Uh, your model can test. Is it only include uh score on IQ and language proficiency? Is there any other like variable related to culture? like culture, intelligence, or other like more stuff we can specifically ground in the ex-culture context? That's a very interesting question and a good one. Uh, last yeah. time when we were doing this experiment with VAS, uh, since the AI interview is seven minutes long, uh, actually 10 minutes, but the three questions are, 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 are at the end are fixed, uh, we have some flexibility in designing these questions in such a way to measure some other specifics that you're mentioning. So we could ask, for example, what does good teamwork mean for you to measure teamwork? Or we we asked if I don't remember if I remember correctly the question was, uh, what do you like about interacting with from other cultures to try to get a uh, cross cultural sensitivity? So, from the answer to those questions, uh, mostly from the verbal aspects, uh, but also from the non-verbal and paraverbal, I think uh, some hidden cues lie there. So does it mean that? Uh... You still need to rely on this like large data uh, student sample to train your data, or you have kind of a quite mature model that can give the score on those video. So the model is mature in the paraverbal and nonverbal domain. However, in the verbal domain for a specific questions, we don't have we didn't have enough data to train it to assess the quality of the answer to that specific question. However, uh, one very interesting thing is that GPT-4 and those really superb big large language models, uh, based on some early experiments that we did, they are actually very good, uh, even without any fine tuning and training, to devise the logic to assess those answers. So something something that's not really super accurate but relatively makes sense could be pulled out of models like that, right I right see. of the right of the shelf. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. So then, yes. Um, let's let's then think about it. And um, yeah, if any interesting study proposals come along, then we'll we'll do the data collection, and hopefully such study proposals will come along, and then yeah. So. And can I please ask uh, the 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 studies that you shared on the screen? I don't remember who uh, which papers were exactly. If you I'll could send hyperlink, hyperlink somehow. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, um, Vas, just a final question for me, for Vas. Oh, gosh. Okay, so, fine. So he's gone, so it's fine. Okay, if you want to send the question, yes, yeah, so I'll forward it to Vladimir. Yeah, yeah I have a question in the chat. I just wanted to understand like whether his software could be used for a different use case, not just in the interview session. It, that, 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 that opens up a lot, of, a lot of opportunities in other use cases. Yeah, I think Vladimir was also copied on the emails. If you want to reply either just to him or the whole group, so you should have his contacts as well. Okay. Okay. Well, let, let's see. So I don't know. I'm still a little lost as to what the final study might look like. So it seems like a good opportunity, but at the same time, it seems to be worth doing it only if we have a good plan for a publication. So otherwise, it's just maybe too costly in terms of the time. So we'll have to see. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. So, um, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.